Hello there everyone, um, this week um, we're going to be finishing off the conflict and tension course and we're going to be looking at this question around the Nazi-Soviet pact, we're going to look at the invasion of Poland and then you're going to do um, some work and some note taking on a question of what caused World War II which we'll have a little look at later on this week. So the first thing that I want you to do in this lesson, you've got the powerpoints as well, is I want you to think very carefully about the relationship between Hitler, the leader of Germany, and Stalin, who was the leader of the Soviet Union, sometimes uh, known as the USSR. Uh, we kind of know it as Russia now. Now, one of the interesting things that happened and give you the context of this in August 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed a pact. Now, pact means an agreement. So they signed this agreement um, with each other where they basically pledged not to go to war with each other. And they also um, divided up Poland between them. And we'll look at some of the geography of this later on in the lesson to see why they did that. Now, this was a very big surprise because one of Hitler's main foreign policy objectives was to get rid of communism. And he hated communism as an ideology. And in turn, Stalin also did not like Hitler very much. So if you look at this cartoon, it's called Rendezvous, which means meeting up. It's by cartoonist David Lowe, who we've come across before. And Hitler is saying, the scum of the earth, I believe. And Stalin replies by saying, the bloody assassin of the workers, I presume. And what it does is it shows that the two sides don't really like each other, but they've come to this arrangement. Um, to have a pact with each other in August 1939 because it suits both sides at this time and we're going to look at some of the reasons why Germany and Stalin signed the Nazi-Soviet pact. So this slide just gives you an overview of what we're going to learn about in this lesson. Um, the key question really is why they signed that pact and why that was so significant on the road to war um, in um, 1939 and crucially it's significant on the country of Poland. Now, to really understand this we need to look at the geography. So we can see here Germany has already taken control of the Sudetenland, has already united with Austria, already taken control of Czechoslovakia. So you can see that Poland is under great threat here. And of course, after the Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia in 1939, um, the British gave a guarantee that they would defend Poland. So Germany's kind of concern here, I suppose, was that if they did invade Poland, which was part of their plan, um, Poland was created by the Treaty of Versailles, so they wanted to destroy Poland and also to get this living space in the east, the Lebensraum, as, um, as it was known as in terms of Hitler's foreign policy aims. So there was a high um, possibility that if Germany did invade Poland, that Britain over here and France would get involved in attacking Germany and of course would attack Germany um, on its western border here. Um, but there was also a concern for um, Germany and Hitler that if Germany invaded Poland, that the Soviet Union would see that in its sphere of influence. And therefore, the Soviet Union might also declare war on Germany. And then Germany would face what's known as a war on two fronts, where it would have to defend itself in both the West, but also the East, as you can see here. So the motivation really of the Nazi-Soviet pact was to make sure that Germany could invade Poland but not risk going to war with the Soviet Union. Now Germany's master plan was eventually to invade the Soviet Union. Of course that did happen in June 1941 but Hitler wanted to take um, each country um, at a time and therefore he wanted to risk um, avoid the risk of a war on two fronts which of course is what happened didn't it during the First World War. So let's find out a little bit more about what happened with this Nazi-Soviet pact. So here's some more cartoons just for you to look at. And again, this notion that Germany and the Soviet Union were not natural allies comes across in cartoons like this. The Soviet Union is often characterised uh, by a bear um, and its big size obviously um, is signifying as a metaphor for the fact that the Soviet Union is a very large country. Another cartoon here shows um, them getting married and the, the key question, wonder how long the honeymoon will last. Most people at the time would, would have suspected that this pact was just going to be quite time limited really and that it was inevitable that one day Germany and the Soviet Union would go to war but this was just making sure it didn't happen at the time. And really the Soviet Union 
they wanted time to rebuild their army. Um, Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, had actually got rid of a lot of his army generals and what was known as a purge in Russia in the 1930s. So the Soviet um, army was pretty weak, actually, in 1939. So it's one of the reasons why Stalin was quite keen to sign this agreement. So that's what the cartoons show. And we've already covered the fact that Germany and the Soviet Union were not natural allies. So just pause the, the, um, the video if you need to, to read it in a bit more detail at any time. So these are the key reasons why Germany wanted to invade Poland. As we saw on that map, this is the next natural country for the Nazis to take over to get the Labens round. I think also Hitler felt confident that because of what had happened with appeasement, that just because Britain had guaranteed Poland's neutrality didn't necessarily mean that um, it would honour that agreement. Um, Poland also, because it had been set up by the Treaty of Versailles, had no natural borders whatsoever. So there was no sort of mountain ranges or rivers or anything like that to cross. So it was actually going to be fairly straightforward for the Nazis um, to invade Poland in 1939 and take control of it. So as we've seen, we've seen that map there. And the attack actually came initially through um, the city of Danzig and then Poland was literally overwhelmed by the invasion when that um, would come in September 1939. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So let's have a look at what the Nazi Soviet pact was. So it's an agreement. A pact means an agreement. And it's sometimes known as if you if you Google it and do some research on it, it's sometimes known as the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact as well. Um, Molotov um, was one of the leading politicians in the Soviet Union. Um, Ribbentrop was the foreign minister of Germany at the time. Um, so two senior um, politicians from both those countries negotiated that Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, Pact, the Nazi Soviet Pact, we tend to call it though, um, on this course. So this is what the deal said. The Soviet Union would allow Germany to invade Poland. The Soviet Union would be given Polish territory. So they divided Poland up into two. And the agreement was signed on the 23rd of August 1939, only um, just, a, just a, over a week before the invasion of Poland actually took place. So one of the reasons why the Soviet Union um, decided to sign this agreement is that it had lost faith in Britain and France. Um, could no longer trust Britain and France as reliable allies. Britain and France talked a lot during their appeasement about how they saw communism as a greater threat than than they did um, Nazi Germany. And obviously that wasn't going to build any kind of trust in the relationship at all. The Soviet Union had joined the League of Nations, but lost faith in, in its ability to protect the Soviet Union with what happened in Manchuria, with Japan, what obviously happened in Abyssinia, um, with the Italians as well. Um, the U USSR, Soviet Union and France signed an agreement in 34, but France didn't stop the reoccupation of the Rhineland, so that stopped trust between the two sides. The appeasement, the Munich Agreement in 1938, which was set up by really Neville Chamberlain, but also the French leader, Deladier, Edward Deladier. Um, the Soviet Union weren't invited um, to the Munich Agreement. They weren't even consulted about it, so that really increased tensions. Um, and the British had been very reluctant to actually even travel to the Soviet Union for any kind of peace talk whatsoever. And when they actually did, by um, April 1939, when the British realised that the situation was, was bad and they would need allies, um, they, the British made a mistake by sending an admiral called Reginald Drax, who's pictured there, um, for talks in the Soviet Union. And they sent him by boat rather than plane, which again suggested that they weren't really taking the situation seriously, um, that they weren't perhaps have have um, an alliance with the Soviet Union as a big priority um, and the, the talks with Admiral Drax didn't really achieve anything whereas Hitler had sent Ribbentrop who was the foreign minister of Germany to the Soviet Union for talks and it seemed at the time Stalin was one of those leaders that you really needed to think about how you treat him carefully he liked to um, see himself as a really important person and therefore he needed to feel that he was being treated um, in a sort of special way um, that people thought he was important and powerful. And the Nazis kind of realised that and they, they kind of made sure that um, Stalin was made to feel as though he was an important person at this time. So they signed that pact together. Um, Stalin felt isolated. Um, Stalin felt that he bought him time. I think Stalin knew in his own mind that the agreement wouldn't last long. Um, but it just gave him time to rebuild up his armed forces. So that shows you a map of the Nazi Soviet pact. So this territory is the territory um, that would be taken by the Soviet Union. So they would increase their territory um, and, and that would be helpful for, for um, Stalin and making him more powerful. And Germany achieved this living space um, 
there in the east of Germany as well. So increased um, the power of Germany at this time. Um, you can see here, this is what Stalin said um, in 1941. We secured peace for our country for 18 months, which enabled us to make military preparations. And that's exactly what Stalin did. Um, after the pact, they started to really prepare for war, knowing that war was very, very likely to happen. This is why Germany wanted to do it. Um, they wanted to avoid that war on two fronts, as we've said. Um, it really meant that they could take control of Poland without worrying about how the Soviet Union would react. And of course, the significance for Britain was that it kind of formalised in Britain that war was kind of going to be inevitable now and that Hitler could not be trusted. Um, this shows uh, another American cartoon on the Nazi-Soviet pact. It shows Poland being sort of presented a little bit like Little Red Riding Hood and that Germany and the Soviet Union have basically taken control of Poland's territory and Poland they're characterised in the cartoon as being um, defenceless. Um, there's a little video link on the PowerPoint for you to have a look at as well but that shows you the significance of the Nazi Soviet pact, a really really important event um, in the course of the Second World War. Um, if you do have any questions, you're not sure or anything, um, then do let me know. But thanks for listening.